one, we qualified for the CAF Champions League quarterfinals. For the first time in, in our... In, hang on. Okay, just had to make sure. The last time I saw Kune happy about qualifying for an African football tournament, well, this happened. Into Mele Kune, Wakwa Bayamalwa Kiaba Afrika Borwa. South Africa has qualified as winners of Group J. Egypt in the relay the impossible. Kanz achieves are in the lead. Hunted. This is how our founder Keza Mdawung looked in 1970. This is how he looked in 1995 when Pirates won their star. And this is how he looked in 2016 when Sundowns got a star on their badge. And this is how he looks 50 years later watching this team go through this season underperforming as they have up to this point. More context, Bobby was born went to school, matriculated, took over Chiefs, and messed up the club in that time as well. Now, for this particular match, you can't fault the boys. They did what they needed to do. We went into this match needing a scoring draw in order to qualify for the next round. As Pizzo found out in 2012, CAF doesn't care about goal difference. They just care about how you played versus the person who you've got the same amount of points as. And for once this season, the boys put up one hell of a fight, coming from behind twice to draw this game and advance. It was actually great to see the team coming into this match with their destiny in their own hands. Caroso scored a penalty to make it 1-1, and then Biliat marked his return from injury, scoring the goal that ultimately put us through to the next round. Not only did he keep our calf dreams alive, but also my streak. You see, each time I call out a play in an episode, they tend to score in the following one. Called out Frostler, or Crossler as I call him. I called out Parker and he ended his streak. And now Billiard, who I wanted a hat trick, but look, he got us through. So to test my powers, and to make sure that it's not random, I am going to choose Ngezana this time. Listen bro, I hate your hair. I hate your little sliding tackles. And seeing as you can't defend well, might as well put you up front and see if you score a goal. Now we wait. It also felt really good to qualify versus a team that has a history of knocking out South African clubs. Supersport, Orlando Pirates, Sundowns and even Gavin Hunt himself with Bidvest have all been knocked out by this same horror team. So to put in this performance and have a great match felt really good. Great result but I'm not gonna lie. I am a bit nervous because at this point of the competition, there isn't a Petro de Luanda to beat up on or a Horoya team that will give you chances. It's the big boys, but we'll see how we do. And we took that momentum and went back into the PSL to draw. Draw against the bogey team that is Barocca FC. The match itself was pretty much the same as a lot of the matches we've had this season. A smaller team as punching way above their weight noticing that we have weaknesses and pretty much matching and exceeding our play. In fact, by half time, this Baraka team had more goal attempts than we did. When Mayama's goal finally came in in the 57th minute, it was actually against the run of play. And what a goal it was. Brilliant. I have not seen better decision making from Keza Chiefs in the box this season. It was all set up for Kayser Chiefs to finally fulfill Gavin Hunt's dream of having a 1-0 and seeing it out. But as Gavin is finding out, in order to shut the back door, you, you have to at least have a door. And Baraka pushed and pushed and pushed with attempt after attempt after attempt. As we've seen the whole season long, our defense is going to make a mistake and is going to be liable for giving away a goal at an important time. This is exactly what happened. They reacted last to a cross that came into the box and were punished for it. But surely it couldn't get any worse. Surely the boys would go into the Cape Town City match spurred on by Gavin Hunt's words saying that he wants to finish fifth and we can finish fifth and they would go into that match and lose. They, they, they lost. They lost. You see, it took Cape Town City all of 20 minutes to figure out that the Chiefs defense was slow, disorganized, and just unable to track runners. 
Just look at Kune's face after that first goal comes in. For all intents and purposes, that position is supposed to be super safe and cleared by one of the defenders. No striker should be running in between both your defenders and score it, but that's exactly what happened. He must have been even more angry with the second goal when the Chiefs defense just washed Tralani and let him have a free shot. Yeah, it deflected and went in, but still, someone needs to go out and win that ball. We got beaten by a guy whose name is Amethyst. It doesn't get any worse. Thank you to Buckers for scoring a bullet header to give us some sort of consolation. This match was actually pretty frustrating. And it was frustrating for quite a few things. One, the defense was the defense we all know. They can't defend, they can't track runners, they're slow. If you can get in behind them, they're going to open up, especially if they're playing in a three. They still get pushed and pulled to each side, following the ball instead of making sure that positionally, there's people behind them or people that can cover what they're going to be doing. Secondly, we finally have somebody who can take advantage of Nurkovic being such a great center forward and run off him. But what did we do? We decided to play the ball on the ground. All season long, I've been watching long balls being raked from one side of the field to the other, with Nurkovic controlling the ball and not having support. Now, when we finally have Biliat, who's pretty good at doing that, we decided to put the ball on the ground. And when that didn't work, we progressed up the pitch and put in late crosses that were going nowhere. I don't know, man. This is one of the most frustrating seasons I have ever seen. So desperate was Gavin that he started playing the central defensive striker, Madoho, up in the front. Something we saw under Mirindo. Something that wouldn't work against the team that is leading you and defending. Really, if you want to put the ball on the ground, play Zuma, play Mashiani, play players who can understand movement. Stop dragging Nurkovic out to the side. Let him stay central and have Biliad pay close to him. In fact, that's what I thought was going to happen when I saw the starting lineup. I thought, inevitably, Manyama would be pulled back into midfield. Gezana or Frostler would go back, either one of them making a four in the back, but that didn't seem to happen. And nothing was happening up front. Look, I know it's been a poor season. But there are just some things that don't make sense. And we can't keep doing this. Now, I'm not expecting anything from the Champions League. I'm actually glad we did what we did just to get a bit of pressure off of Gavin and the boys. But if this is how we're going to carry on, it's still going to be a very long season. I don't see us finishing in the top eight. And if we perform like this, going into a match against the wounded Sundowns team, I'm a bit worried. But nonetheless, we stay positive. We hope that they can turn it around. We believe in the boys. Yes, we criticize, but we do just want them to do well. As always, kia lebo kosi for life.